This is this is a right. mod. Go ahead. So it will just add under wetland regulations. Right now, you have A, B, and C. You know the total acreage, the wetlands classified, the exclusions. I'm just going to add a D. And move the section to D. And move that section, yeah, because it's under final plat and bonding, and that's not the that's not the procedure now. So if I just move that, then they will still have to do the parish right of ways, utility servitudes, and drainage. Okay, so so the motion would be to move. What what is one to what was going to be stricken is going to be moved under the wetland section is D. Correct. So and we're going to leave 12537 one as it is because the blue writing is currently in the ordinance. Correct. Okay. I'll make that motion. I'll make that recommendation for introduction. I'll second that. Okay. Anybody from the audience got it? Want to discuss this? Got anything to say about this change? Nobody. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all right. I just want to get that cleared up. So I think you did a good job. So we weren't bumping the gun. Yep. More yep. important, we can go all the way up to six. Okay, agenda item uh, 4A. This is a moratorium for disposal wells and injection wells, uh, specifically class five. Lauren, do you want to do you want to read this ordinance? Uh, the 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 language in the ordinance. Sure. An ordinance to adopt a temporary 12-month moratorium regarding the construction and drilling of Class 5 injection wells and monitoring wells prohibiting any activities associated with Class 5 wells where the well is specific to geologic testing of rock formation, monitoring, drilling, or injecting of CO2 for long-term storage. This shall include the prohibition of all activities within Livingston Parish and the waterways herein, including but not limited to detonation of charges for seismic testing, drilling, or injecting of liquids into a Class 5 well within the Parish of Livingston. Um, the 12-month moratorium is to further evaluate the permitting needs of the Parish of Livingston to establish regulations that would permit such activities within the Parish of Livingston and its waterways. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll say a few things. I, um, you know, in the last Ordinance Committee meeting, uh, it was decided that we were going to uh, pursue writing a moratorium on the class five ejection wells specific to uh, what Ms. Uh, White just spoke about. I'd like to say that um, I'm against the class five wells being drilled in the Lake of Marpal uh, and north of Holden. The specific reasons is because um, there are risks associated with this and I would like to uh, obtain more knowledge about the risk associated with it. I, I would like to obtain more knowledge about the state statute laws associated with this, uh, the authority and power that our current local government has uh, around these class five injection wells being drilled. Um, and then uh, after that knowledge is obtained, I would like to um, work with the council to um, establish some regulation that, that protects the people and, and protects their quality of life, uh, that protects our environment, it protect, that would protect our resources. And, 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 and so um, I'm in favor of this. That's what I have to say. Um, at this time, we would like to offer uh, anyone from the audience, we just need to, um, yeah, do it exactly like you're doing it. Raise your hand, and then we're going to call on you one at a time. Um, and we'll try to go in order, you know, whoever raised their hands first, second, third. Um, try to come to the podium, maybe speak for two minutes, you know, we're running a little short. We'd like to end this meeting by 4.50, no, 5.50. Um, and, um, and we'll kind of go from there if, if you can. You know, try not to repeat the same, uh, you know, statement that are, you know, that the uh, individual before you spoke about. And uh, we'll kind of go with it like that. So. Uh, the sir, sir in, the, in the yellow shirt there, you're welcome to come to the podium. Don't forget to state your name and address uh, for the record. Okay. Mm. I'm a resident of Holden, Louisiana. Okay. According to the Fourth Amendment, I really don't have to. Need your name, sir. Name and address? Need your name. Why, sir? For the record. For just, the record. Just for the record. Fourth Amendment says you don't have to divulge any of that. I'm just letting you know. It's against the constitutional rights. This is what's going on right now. Okay, hold on one second. I'm not trying to cut you off. Okay. No rights to search and seizure. Nobody has a right to ask me who my name is. 
Government, nobody. That's part of the Constitution. Secondly, I'm not, not against you, not against you, not against you. I'm a resident of Louisiana and Holden, Louisiana. I do not want my name on the record because of how big this is. Okay. Secondly, this type of seismic survey is from the 1900s. They've got thermal imaging and, and terahertz frequency with a 4,000 kilowatt cross-convergent terahertz frequency that can tell you everything is in the strata. Anytime they detonate a charge that is equivalent to five sticks of dynamite, it is going to cause conversion patterns and it's gonna cause expansion joints in the strata. If you are putting any type of carbon capture into, the, into a containment underneath the ground and there is a chance that it may leak out of all of these containment units, which I have a map of what's already in our earth, and it's going to drop the panel's jaw when you see what they already have underneath our substrate in America. This is a globalist agenda. This is our home. Now, I don't know how serious anybody on this panel is taking this. I don't know y'all. I don't live with you, and I don't know how extreme of measures y'all think of what this could be, but through my research, Mr. Shane, yes, I'm sir. your man. Okay. I'm going to show you what you need to know. All right. I spent more time and effort because of what I believe in, not just because of this nation, because of what that lake means to me and my family. They don't have to detonate anything, folks. They don't. They need to stick it under the ground and monitor it. If they mess with the strata, it is going to cause complexity in its containment. Bottom line, folks. Bottom line. Secondly, I've got some other things that you need to understand. Okay. This is bigger than carbon capture. This has nothing to do with carbon capture, okay? Because there's a thing called sequestrian. If they were to release all of the CO2, which our plants love and need, it's going to super grow everything in our substrate. It's going to do it. We don't need it, but the plants need it. The plants need it. Where does the CO2 come from, folks? Have y'all asked yourself this question? Where's all the CO2 coming from? It's coming from hydrogen, green hydrogen. Do y'all wanna know where these green hydrogen containments are? They're distributed all over Louisiana in subset areas that are very questionable, very questionable. Some of these containment units have 5,000 GS of pressure. That's 110 million pounds of hydrogen, folks. Have y'all ever heard of the hydrogen bomb? Does anybody know what a hydrogen bomb is? Now, I'm not trying to over-exaggerate, but according, according to my research and what this is called, to the Green Deal, is called Earthshot. Earthshot has Prince William's capital in it, the World Economic Forum, which is Klaus Schwab, and a number of other delegated individuals that we don't agree with, like the Biden administration. We all know what happened with that and what's going on with that. Now- Got about 45 seconds left. Okay. From this point on, I want you to understand, I'm gonna give you all the research you need, sir. Appreciate that. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this isn't about carbon capture. This is something bigger than what we can imagine. This isn't about free energy. This goes way beyond that. I'm letting y'all know what they're gonna do. If, they, if, if we do not take a stand, they're going to kill that lake. It's over with, it's done. Did you know, does anybody know, just two backhoe digs in the lake is a, approximately a $100,000 fine, 60 to $100,000 fine if you were to dig in that lake? So we'll get oh, this, is, this is Louisiana property. Nobody told us when we went up to that meeting at the mineral rights that we needed to stand up and say nay. Sir. We were uneducated. Now we're educated. When we go to another meeting, we need to stand up in the audience and say, nay, we don't agree with it. Sir. That's all I gotta say. God Appreciate you. Yes, all right, so the lady, we're gonna get you, Joe. The lady in the, bl in the black in the back. You could state your name and address. Yes, sir. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Desiree Lemoyne. I'm with Industry Makes. 
My address is 4701 Blue Bonnet Boulevard, Suite A. Um, good afternoon, Chairman, members. Um, thank you for your attention to the important issue of carbon capture and storage. Again, my name is Desiree Lemoyne. I am the campaign manager for Industry Makes. Industry Makes is a 501c4 that was established out of collaboration and a pressing need by industry to present a united front in the face of coordinated anti-industrial messaging. We believe that manufacturing is the backbone of Louisiana's economy. Louisiana's manufacturing sector, along with the small, medium, and large businesses that support them can no longer stand by and let others tell their story. Oftentimes, the others don't tell the accurate story. Industry Makes is working to be a trusted source of industrial communication, and that's why I'm here tonight. I'm here to show support for the science of carbon capture and storage, also known as CCS. I am not here to give you data or to bore you with numbers of environmental economic impacts. I'm here to be a voice for responsible industrial growth in Louisiana and to ask that industry, this community, and the governmental entities, federal, state, and local, work together as we navigate this energy transition. Science is leading industrial growth and expansion in the direction of reuse and recycling of waste streams that have been studied for decades. From capturing hydrogen from plant emissions to make hydrogen fuel cells, to making plastic out of wood chips, to, um, to capturing the carbon and safely, and safely storing it underground, the development and deployment of these innovative technologies <laughs> go a long way to meeting the global energy demand while meeting the goals of carbon neutrality, a goal that industry supports. CCS is the process of capturing carbon dioxide from industrial activity or power plants that provide us products that are essential to our everyday modern life. From the chlorine for clean drinking water and germ-free swimming pools, rubber for the, on, on your tires and the bottom of your shoes, plastics that are used for food safety and storage, wound care, blood bags, IV lines, and of course the miracle of modern medicines. All, and of course the power plants that give us light and the energy to flip a switch or a plug and an outlet to wash our clothes, wash dishes, and otherwise clean and sanitize our homes. Industry Makes is asking you tonight for dialogue and collaboration with this community as we move forward in hopes that you will give this resolution more thought before moving forward with your vote. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. The gentleman in the red in the back. Uh, we're going to get you next, G-Boy. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> My memory's bad, G-Boy. Just If you can, state your name and your address. So my name's uh, Cody Lambert. I live, well, I'll say I live off of 441 in Holden. Um, I guess what I want to bring to the table and I want to ask is, with all the changes, with all of the the structure, the real estate, and as well as the hazards associated with this particular project. Do we as a, do we as a parish and do we as a town of Holden have the emergency response and the ability to, if something happens with this well, I've got a family at home, right? And I'm not home all day and I don't know if there's anybody in this audience that works in a manufacturing complex, but I'm, I'm designed every day to think about what's the worst case scenario? What happens if something goes bad? What happens if something fails? I know me personally, I live a mile and a half away from the fire station. If something happens, if something goes bad, my brother-in-law down there has a family at his house with kids. I've got a wife and a son at home that's there whenever I'm not. Have we thought about the infrastructure to be able to avoid a catastrophic event and then if there is a catastrophic event, do we have the infrastructure? Do we have the people? Do we have the resources to accommodate that? Me personally, if one person goes down, if there's one wreck, if there's one issue in Holden, Holden's resources are gone because they're going and addressing that. So what happens if a well blows out? What happens if the oh shit moment, sorry, I don't know if I can say that, but what happens if oh shit happens? Has anybody thought of that? 
the guys in the back, can y'all answer that? Is there, is there money that's going to be funded to our place and to our home that we live in every day to make sure that our families are safe whenever, when I'm not home? Has somebody thought of that? So, okay, so we're going to get to somebody else. We're running out of time, but absolutely. I just want to say those are very, very, very good questions. I have those same questions myself. To me, the purpose of the Class 5 moratorium and the Class 6 moratorium is, is to review those plans to ensure that the people are protected. And if they're not, either, you know, not perform the work or write some regulation Absolutely. that would require require that. So that's what I want to bring to the table. If you can't tell me that my wife and my son are going to be protected at Absolutely. home and they have a way to be protected when something goes wrong, don't drill on my don't drill on our property. Don't drill right. anywhere around us because my family comes first. I don't I work in a manufacturing complex. I don't give a damn about the manufacturing piece of it. At the end of the day, my family comes first. And I, I feel like I speak for everybody else in this room. Appreciate you very much. G-Boy, you want to say something? Hey, thank you, Cody. Hey, I'm Jerome McMorris. I serve on the Parish Council for District 6. I'm really not going to talk to you guys about this. Uh, I want to say thank you, Shane. Uh, the Class 5, Eric Cal, uh, Harold, there's a bunch of them, right? So it took a lot of help to get this done. Uh, the research and narrow it down to where we, we could put some teeth into it. So thanks for the help. All right. Uh, it's going to take a lot of people's help to make this happen. Tuesday night, we got a special meeting that's going to happen here at this facility. All you guys and ladies asking these questions, y'all can ask us all day long. I guarantee you we can't answer them. I done said it beach with a, at the, that bit myself, Kenyon, and a bunch of us went. It's over our heads. But we got people coming next to you tonight. Should have that answer for us, right? What time? Six o'clock. Tuesday night. We got the state representatives that passed that bill, 363, for us. Or, yes, 63. They passed the bill. They're going to tell us how, why we did this. Then we got all down state agencies coming. And they're going to explain to us where we at on this. Tonight is only for the class five whales. Uh, we're just trying to trying to protect the people here. All right. If we don't put a moratorium on, on it, they're coming to Coyell. They're coming to Holden. They don't lease all the property from warehouses, right? They're coming. You look at the maps we got. <clears> this <throat> pipelines come from Shell Norco. Everywhere is going to be feeding this stuff, right? So I encourage you guys. Get with your councilman and vote yes for this. All right, thank you. Anybody else? We got five minutes left. Mr. Brian, his hand went up. I'm sorry, we're gonna get you next, I promise, back there. Brian Clemens, 34332 Robbie Lee Drive. About two minutes, we got about two more we wanna catch too. I'll be brief, I support the moratorium. This area of Louisiana sits on top of the Tuscaloosa trend. We have stopped fracking for oil because the Tuscaloosa trend is intrinsically unstable. It's subject to well blowouts. Some of these wells, about 20% of them, are filled full of sour gas. The sequestration, I believe, is supposed to be about 9,000 feet, and that's just the beginning of the Tuscaloosa trend. I don't really think we want to be drilling right on top of a formation that is intrinsically unstable and unsafe. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to. We're going to get the, yeah, the lady with the, uh, her hand in the air at the moment. Aaron? Yeah, come on in. Aaron Sandiford, 24411 Omaha Harris Lane. Um, I have two things. The moratorium, will it affect Lake Marpal? Is, ha, ha, it's just for the parish, right? It, it doesn't, it's not for Lake Marpal. Oh. I wrote into it Livingston Parish waterways. To me, it, it would be the waterways within Livingston Parish. How it does, would my thought is? I'm not an attorney, but my thought is the Livingston Parish line does protrude out into Lake Marpaul. You can take a look at the maps. It's not the entire lake, but it does protrude out into some of Lake Marpaul. Um, uh, also, quickly, um, there is. So I attended the Oxy One meeting at Doyle High School, and the, the big questions. The, the, the top two questions were what happens if it's dispersed into the atmosphere 
and what happens 20, 30, 40 years down the line. I talked to the people that represented Oxy One that night. Nobody had any answers to those questions. But if you look up uh, Satarsha, Mississippi, it did disperse into the atmosphere in Satarsha, Mississippi. When that happened, it sucked the oxygen out of the, the air. The people became disoriented and could not breathe. They, they did not have emergency preparedness for this situation, so the emergency vehicles came in and their, their engines cut. They absolutely didn't know what to do. So please research that. I just wanted to make you aware of that information. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We're going to get the gentleman in the black cap, and then that's going to be the last one, and then we're going to then we're going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Chapter 125. We did it. Hey Shane, I'm uh, Dwayne Mitchell. Uh, I'm the leaseholder of the property where the the well is being drilled at the current time, and. Uh, I had some questions about this Senate Bill 353, but Gerald's already addressed that. I guess we'll talk about that Tuesday. The other thing I had for the commission was, I was back in January, I ran into the survey crew on our property that were surveying for this well site. So it leads me to believe at that time, Weyerhaeuser knew what was coming. What, is there some way we could put an ordinance in place or something of that nature that like a company like Weyerhaeuser agreed a, a project like this that's going to affect the whole community, why wasn't you guys notified? You know, is that something we could work on, something we could come up with maybe to, because, you know, like I said, that was back in January, and I'm certain that they knew what was coming. Now, here it is, crunch time, and we all scrambling to try to find answers when we would have had, what, eight months? Yeah, well, I, I, I know, think the answer so, is, I, I mean, no. I mean, because it's it's systemic. It's not just this. A lot, a lot of stuff gets dumped on us. At the when we find out, and it's you know, it's the eleventh or twelfth hour. You know, going into the twelfth hour on things. If we, there was an ordinance that could retroactively stop things, I'm sure we would have passed that a long time ago. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I'm again not an attorney, but. I don't, I don't think so. But I, w I wish because we can you ask our attorney, well, Dwayne. Well, I'm because because honestly, it, let, let me give you an example. If I decide to subdivide my property into so many pieces, I got to post big signs mm -hmm. saying I got to do this and everything. But yet they can decide to do something with their property that affects our whole community, and they don't have to notify anybody. Yeah, Dwayne, so, I, I wrote that down. We're going to look really hard at that when we go to write the regulation on the ordinance. Mm -hmm. And if any way possible we can put that in there, we will. Okay. I think it's a great idea, by the way. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can we discuss the noise before we Yep. We need to talk about that. We got. Just 10 seconds. Yep. Just state your name and then. Okay. Lisa Neal, Highway 1036. We are already dealing with the noise, noise, and this is just one well. We are about to be with surrounded by wells when this starts happening, and we are already dealing with traffic. You've heard about the road, but the noise is unbelievable for the, uh, all of us on 1036. Thank you. If we can put something in place there, too, that's another battle. Thank you. Appreciate you very much. Okay, does the councilman have anything to say? I, I, I want to say something. So we put a moratorium on class six wells, which is which is the wells that are actually disposal. Does anybody know what a class five well is? I want to read something to you. Class five wells is used to inject non-hazardous fluids underground. Fluids are injected either into or above an underground source of drinking water. Class five wells include any wells that are not already classified as one through four or six. The diverse group ranges from simple shallow wells to complex experimental injection technology. Most class five wells are low tech and depend on gravity to drain fluids directly below the land surface. Dry wells, cesspools, septic systems, leach fields are examples of, si of simple class five wells. Because their construction often provides little or no pretreatment and these fluids are injected directly into or above an underground source of drinking water, proper management is important. More sophisticated five, class five wells may rely on gravity or use pressure systems for fluid injection. Some sophisticated systems include advanced wastewater disposal systems used by industry, experimental wells used to test new or improved technologies, and systems used to inject and store water for later use. 
Only thing I'm going to tell you is apartment buildings that use septic systems for sanitary waste disposal sometimes have class five wells. Municipalities where stormwater flows into dry wells, it's a, it's a class five well. Strip malls where businesses such as photo processors, dry cleaners discharge sanitary waste and process chemicals into septic systems are an example of a class five well. Office buildings where injected water passes through heat exchangers to cool the buildings are an example of a class five well. And car washes where wastewater enters a floor drain that leads to a dry septic well or septic system is an example of a class five well. I just think that, that we're, we're, we're having a pretty big reach here to, to say we want to put a moratorium on class five wells. We've addressed, you know, the fact that we're going to try to address our ordinance on class six wells. I, it's my opinion that... All right, hold on. So, so let me just answer that and we're gonna, we're gonna we're, this ordinance addresses class five well Gary, Gary, Gary let me just answer that I just want we got to we got to shut this meeting down y'all we're gonna we're gonna have more meetings um, we're gonna have an ordinance uh, I mean a, a council meeting later tonight we need to go get prepared for that but um, I want to say this Gary what he just read is correct about the class five wells but to answer his question, if anybody out there knew that, I would like to say I did know that. I knew that last Thursday night. That's why I fought to not include it in the Class 6 moratorium. We held that out. Gerald Boy and Randy helped make a good decision there. And we went and we wrote this moratorium specific to Class 5 wells for the monitoring of CO2 long-term storage wells. So my, 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 my thought there is that this 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 the way this is written it's uh more out to stand and hold in court because it's specific it's not about all class five wells it's specific to the wells that's being drilled north of holden and to the wells that are going to be drilled in lake marpaul look we got it we got to get out of here we got to close this meeting thanks everybody for coming i appreciate every single one of y'all in here uh is there a motion to uh, adjourn this meeting motion. second we got a motion on the floor to adjourn we got a second um all in favor to adjourn aye, aye. We're going to start the next meeting at 6.